everyone. Thank you for coming. What I will present today is a paper that is about the trade-off between uh, forest preservation and development. And I will be very specific about what I want to talk about today. I will talk about deforestation that is driven by some agricultural land expansion. And the relationship between this deforestation and climate change is that deforesting is responsible for roughly 20% of the global greenhouse gas emissions, and it constitutes the main source of emission in some countries. Then in the international um, conferences about climate change, some countries have agreed that they could reduce their emissions only if they are compensated for the opportunity cost of doing so. So this has created a lot of debate about the red mechanism or the red plus. Um, I will not really enter into all the debate about this mechanism and how to implement it, etc. What I want to focus on today is just about this notion of opportunity cost. What does it mean to reduce deforestation? And the opportunity cost of reducing deforestation, are they just in the agricultural sector? Or is it more a global question about development? And to be um, precise, what I will try to present is two possible versions of the opportunity cost of reducing deforestation. One is thinking of an economy that is purely agricultural and then if you reduce the, the amount of land that is available, it will imply that some of the rural labor force will not be used efficiently. But you can also think about a more diversified economy and then reducing deforestation and reducing the amount of land that is available would force some of the rural labor force to move from the agricultural sector towards different sectors that are potentially initially less profitable. And to present these two versions of uh, the opportunity cost, I will use a model where deforestation is induced by trade. And what I mean exactly is that the country has a comparative advantage in the agricultural sector, and this is why it needs more land. And each farmer allocates their, la their labor force efficiently between two activities. One is uh, production, and the other is land maintenance and land clearing. And then I build um, a very simple two-sector growth model where there are two sectors, agriculture and industry, and each sector has a specific factors. So land is a specific factor for agriculture and capital is a specific factor for industry and both can ac be accumulated. And what I want to uh, show you is that there are two ways to define the opportunity cost of reducing deforestation. One is what I will call the untied mechanism. So that's a transfer mechanism that would cover the opportunity cost in an economy that is mostly specialized in agriculture, and then reducing the amount of land available, which is reduce the amount of land per worker, uh, per agricultural worker. Whereas the other possibility is to think about a tied mechanism. And when I say tied, it means tied to diversification. And in this case, um, the objective is to shift some of the rural workers toward uh, different sectors. So this is the presentation of the model, uh, briefly. So I have two stock of land. One is forested land and the other is agricultural land. And deforestation is just a conversion from one stock to the other. So NT is my agricultural land. And at the individual level, each farmer uh, decide how they allocate their labor between uh, production. And here you can see well, maybe you, you won't see very well, but it's simply a Cobb Douglas function where you use your land and some labor, LA, in order to produce, and both inputs are necessary. And you can also use your labor to increase the amount of land that you are using. And this is the land dynamics at the individual level. So each farmer can 
um, increase its amount of land up to a point where um, it is too big for him just to maintain this um, land. And we assume that they do not optimize their um, return in terms temporarily for the decision of allocation of labor. So each farmer can deforest basically until they reach this um, kind of optimal size for an agricultural um, lot and star. And this can be um, ad added so that at the aggregate level, we have LT number of farmers and they um, they use the amount of land that is at the aggregate level n t, and you can see that the aggregate level of land depends on the size of the rural labor force, and the production function is relatively simple. It's linear in the size of the agricultural land. For the manufacturing sector, it's a very standard way of representing it. So I just have capital and labor, and capital can be accumulated through investment. So what I want to show you is that the context <coughs> is deforestation that is driven by um, a comparative advantage in agriculture. So if you, if you uh, play a little bit with the model, you would see that basically th there are some specialization patterns that would um, occur. And when you open to trade, you will either specialize in the agricultural sector or in the industrial sector, depending on the comparison between the world price, P, and what was the, um, the relative price that was um, revealed in the Otake case, PD. So if the, price is, if the world price is high, which is my first uh, dot in the proposition, then the economy will move towards um, a purely agricultural agricultural economy. And I want to focus on this case because I think it's the most extreme case. So imagine that deforestation is not due to uh, any market failure. It is really um, just following the dynamic of development of the country because the country has a comparative advantage in agriculture. And let's see how we can force or induce the country to limit this deforestation process without uh, reducing the development potential of uh, the economy. So this is how the transfer um, is important. So I focus on this case where the world price is high and I introduce a transfer which depends basically on two parameters, SOG and SG. What I want to just um, tell you is that basically I provide a constant level of transfer to the economy, it's SOG. And then if the economy deforests more than what was the agreement, there is a penalty. And this is my little SG. Okay, so that's basically an instrument with two, um, two components. And I will present two different ways to define this set of parameters, SOG and SG. Either you consider that the economy is already in this process of specialization, and you just consider at the steady state the, potential, the extreme cases where all the population is already rural. So consider an economy where all the labor force is in the agricultural <coughs> sector, and think how can we save some forest in this context? So that's one way to define the set of parameters. And the other is, oh, no, we should not let the economy derive in that, um, in that um, direction. We should um, induce and maintain some diversification by defining the, the transfer mechanism in a different way, which is my tide mechanism. So. <laughs> This is how I try to define it in the most simple way. So the tide mechanism is willing to shift some of the labor force toward industry. And it is, industry is, in this case, less profitable because the economy has a comparative advantage in agriculture. 
And this is um, a way to describe what is the incentive. So I define it endogenously. And the incentive to stop deforesting will depend on this difference between the actual world price and um, the world price that ensure diversification, which was my PD. The second mechanism um, accepts the fact that the economy has been uh, completely specialized in agriculture and then try to preserve some forest by making some of the labor force uh, idle or less efficiently used. And this is what I call the congestion effect. And in this case, basically, the, the farmers are not freely allocating their labor between their two activities, which was land clearing versus production. They reduce their maintenance effort, and this has uh, also an impact on the output. So basically, the opportunity cost is just a uh, decrease in the agricultural output here. And the incentive is endogenously defined, and here you can see it's a little bit more complex. It depends both on the world price, but also on the size. So N hat is the size of the agricultural uh, land that is available for production, given the environmental target. Um, and now what I'm interested in doing is basically comparing the cost of each type of transfer from the point of view of the donors. Because, so there are two different ways of defining the parameters. Um, maybe one solution would be less costly or maybe more cost efficient than the other. And this depends on how you define the, um, the amount of constant transfer that is supposed to be given at each period, SOG. And the proposition says that the comparison between the two mechanisms depend on both, on, on two different variables. It depends at the same time on the, world, on the relative world price and also on the size of the forest that we want to preserve. So if the world price is high enough to give the country a comparative advantage in agriculture, but not too high, so it's limited by this threshold value, then the mechanism that <coughs> ensure diversification is more cost efficient. So that's the first point. However, if the price, if the relative world price is too high, then the mechanism that induce diversification uh, will be more cost efficient only if you want to preserve a very large amount of forest. If you just have a limited environmental objective, then it is better to let the economy be specialized in agriculture and um, just and occur, um, sorry, um, and then you, you just have this congestion effect that comes from an inefficient allocation of labor in the agricultural sector. Um, that's a, just an extension. So in the first part of the model, I consider that the forest has no value for the producers. And now I say, oh, but maybe in many of those developing countries, forest has some value. And one part of the value can come from those non-timber forest products. And um, if you consider that, then it means that um, there will be less deforestation in the laissez-faire situation. However, so that's what I say. However, it, it has some impact on the price at which you will switch to this situation where you specialize in the agricultural sector. And what is important for our comparison between the two preservation schemes is that the, the results that I've showed just before are basically preserved. It's just that the policy threshold are modified by um, introducing non-timber forest products. So just a little bit of discussion. Of, of course, it's a very uh, rough presentation of the problem. I just want to, to um, OK, I, I will go faster. Um, there is a problem of enforcement here in when you want to decentralize the equilibrium. And maybe if you have a more um, diversified economy, 
there will be less need for enforcement. So that's one potential benefit that is not taken into account in the model. And, and then there is a problem of durability. You need maybe some spillovers in the industrial sector so that people would remain in the industrial sector even when the transfer um, ends, potentially. Um, so that's the concluding remark. Um, I think I've already said that. Thank you.